this video is going to show us a little bit about R Markdown. So here I am at my homepage. I'm going to start with the syllabus. Down here in assignments, I say all tutorials and course notes must be created using R Markdown and compiled into PDF or HTML. I'm actually going to prefer HTML such that everybody in this class create web pages that consist of all of the notes that they take throughout this course. If you can per, uh, prefer to compile your own assignments in Microsoft Word, R Markdown will do that for you, but I don't have Microsoft Word and I won't install it, so I'm going to ask you all for HTML files throughout the semester. So let's just do a quick tour of R Markdown. So this video assumes you have R and R Studio installed on your machine. Go ahead and download this file the R Markdown and LaTeX cheat sheet from our website. And I highly encourage you to have somewhere on your machine a Math 350 folder into which you put all of your files associated with this class. So I already have one. In fact, I already have this file here, so I don't need to save it at all. But you should save this R Markdown file inside your Math 350 folder which is easily found for this course. So then you should come over here into R Studio. Now, if you don't have, let's see, how can I help you do this? Here's what you should do. You should go over to Applications and find R Studio and open that. Do not open R. Open R Studio. The icon should look like this. Let's see if I The icon you open should look like this, whether you're on a Windows or Mac or Linux. The icon for our studio should be like this, so this is the one you want to open. We will not actually ever touch R. Do not delete it, but you don't need to touch it. We only ever need to use our studio. So let's open our studio. Once we're inside our studio, we're going to open up this R Markdown LaTeX cheat sheet. You can do that by going File, Open File. And here's why I was telling you to have a really easy to find Math 350 folder so that you can then go open up this R Markdown cheat sheet that we just downloaded from our website. So let's just go ahead and open up that file and look at it. This looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. I totally understand. We are going to learn what this file is all about. I think the easiest way to learn for us is by going through and using this cheat sheet to see right off the bat what it does for us. So we're going to go knit. Just immediately hit knit so you can see what this file does for us. And if you have just installed the R in R Studio, it might ask you to install some required packages. Do you want to install this now? Yes, you do. And then R may or may not do a bunch of flashy sort of stuff. Oh, yeah, here it goes. It's got a green progress bar. It's going to flash some text down here after it downloads. Awkwardly, red in the world of R is not always an error message. Boo, R. I don't know why it does that, but that's the way it does. So we're going to patiently wait for this to finish installing. It shouldn't take too long, but it might take a few moments. Okay, I suppose while we're doing that, we'll look at the file itself. Look, this R Markdown file has some has a title, has some metadata up top here. It's got a title, it's got an author, and it's got a date. And when you hit init, it will compile this file for you. Because the output is this device an HTML document, I've actually created an HTML document. This is a certified web page that you could open in your browser if you wanted to. There it is. So we're just going to keep looking at it through the uh, RStudio internal browser just for a minute here. So what you should do is notice the similarities between this input document, which has an extension .rnd, and the output document, 
which has extension HTML, because it is literally an HTML web page. And then keep looking, just spend some time noticing the similarities from the input to the output. Typing math and LaTeX, as long as it shows up after two hashtags, you get a header over here. So there's other headers in this file for you, like more symbols is a section header. And here is more symbols. All of this mess is what gives us this table over here. So you can see we're in a math class, right? I'm immediately showing you how to type out a Greek letter alpha into the web page. It turns out you're going to use this syntax that goes by the name of LaTeX or LaTeX. And you know what? That's in fact how I spend the first paragraph of this cheat sheet, is I tell you about LaTeX and how you can embed it inside our markdown documents. So you can read a little bit about LaTeX here. You could go read from the web page, which is going to be immediately helpful, but nonetheless, a link to it. You can go read more about our markdown documents if you want, or you can just stare at this file for a little bit. Stare at the input and then the output. Anything that shows up as text just shows up as text over here. Anything in between dollar signs is how you start math in line. If you use double dollar signs, start and closing, you will get display mode. That means it puts your math symbols in centered in the middle of the page in between some parallels. So as you're introduction to our markdown, I encourage you to spend some time looking at this file from the input over here to the output over here. Here I'm telling you how we're going to include R code in these R markdown files. Here's an R code chunk. You can get an R code chunk by clicking up here, insert an R code insert a new R chunk right there. And it'll give you, well, let's just do that. And here I'm going to create a new variable named Y, and I'm going to put 3.14 into it. And then I'm going to print Y. And I'm going to hit knit again, and watch how it updates this file over here on the right. It compiles it, spends time doing some stuff, think it through. And up here is the code, and here it is included in the output. File, HTML. Here's the output of calculating the mean. And here is some code where I store into the variable y, the number 3.14, and then I print the variable y. So here's that code, and here's the output. Now, that's not a great example, but it shows you how to play with it on your own. And then here is where I'm going to start telling you about what the course notes are all about. But I'll do that on a different video, so we'll skip that section for now. More references down here shows you how to include some URLs, because it's a web page, right? So you got to be able to link somewhere. For instance, there's an official R Markdown cheat sheet. It's a PDF. It's huge. And it's very dense. But it's an excellent resource once you start learning the details of R Markdown. So for now, we'll skip it. And we'll just see that, oh, here's a bunch of links. And, oh, you know what I should do? Since the first section of Math 350 started a Discord channel, I might as well link to it everywhere I can. So here is me creating a new URL inside our R Markdown document. So now there's a link to Piazza or Discord, just as we typed out over here in the input document. This is your intro to R Markdown. I encourage you to spend some time looking through this file yourself. Once you feel a little bit more comfortable with it, I want you to go create your own new R Markdown document. Once you start feeling more comfortable with this, go create a new R Markdown document. Give it your own title, give it your own name. Please choose HTML. Using PDF will take some extra installation that I don't really want to cover in this class, so just please choose HTML. Okay. And then check out the example document that our studio gives you by default. Click knit, see what it looks like on the output. We are going to use the system on Markdown 
for the rest of the class, so I hope you'll spend some time familiar yourself, familiarizing yourself 